ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثات بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين I'd like to welcome you all for continuation of review of reviewing the book مختصر من هاج القاصدين by Imam Ibn Qudam al-Maqdisi رحمة الله عليه Methodology of the Seekers Tonight inshallah we have a new chapter and this will be the ninth class for reviewing the book. This is Kitab Adab al-Quran al-Kareem, the mannerism, uh, the behavior dealing with the Quran, inshallah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam ala rasulillah. Book on the excellency of the Quran and its manners. The greatest status of the Qur'an is that it is the speech of Allah and Allah has praised it in many ayah, such as his statement from Surah Al-An'am, verse number 2, of which the meaning is, and this is a book which we have sent down containing blessings. Also, verse number 9, truly this Qur'an guides to that which is most upright. This is from Surah Al-Isra. And falsehood neither approaches it from in front of it nor from behind it. Surah to Fusala, verse number 42. <clears throat> and it has been narrated by Al Bukhari from Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of you is he who learns the Qur'an and teaches it. And Anas radiallahu anhu said, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Truly Allah has adherents from amongst the people. It was asked, Who are those, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The people of the Qur'an. They are Allah's adherents and his elect. Narrated by an Nisa'i. And Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu reported that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, It will be said to the companions of the Quran, Ascend and recite as you used to recite in the world. For truly your rank is at the place where you recite the last ayah. And Tamidhi related this last hadith and said that it is sahih. And Buraida said that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Truly the Qur'an greets its companions on the day of Qiyamah, when his grave opens upon him in the appearance of a learned man, of a lean man. It will say to him, Do you recognize me? So he will say, I do not recognize you. So it will say, I am your companion, the Qur'an who caused you to be thirsty during the midday heat and kept you awake at night. Truly every merchant is disposed to his trade and I am for you behind every trade. So he will be given authority in his right hand and eternity in his left. And the crown of dignity will be placed upon his head. His parents will be adorned with two trinkets which this world and what it contains cannot equal. So they will say, why have we been adorned with this? It will be said, 
due to your sons taking hold of the Quran. Then it will be said to him, Recite and ascend through the ranks of paradise and its rooms. So he will continue to ascend as long as he continues reciting, whether that is speedy recital or articulate. Ahmed. Ibn Masood, radiallahu anhu, said, The carrier of the Quran should be known by his standing during the night while people are asleep, and by his fasting during the day while the people eat, and by his sorrow while the people laugh, and by his crying while the people laugh, and by his silence while the people argue, and by his kushul while the people act arrogantly. And it is not proper for him to be harsh, nor heedless, nor loud, nor hot-headed. al Fudail said, The carrier of the Qur'an is the flag barrier of Islam. And it is not proper that he partakes in vanity with those who partake in vanities, nor be forgetful with those who are forgetful, nor be heedless with those who are heedless out of glorification to Allah. And Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal said, I saw the Lord of might in a dream, and thus asked, O Lord, what is the closest thing by which those who seek closeness seek closeness? He said, With my speech, O Ahmed. So I said, With reflection, O Lord, or without reflection? He said, With reflection and without reflection. Okay, before uh, the statement, mm -hmm. uh, not to forget with those who forget, mm -hmm. not to play with those who play, mm -hmm. out of... Uh, Glorification. Okay, after this, he is there something before Imam Ahmed said. It's not supposed for him to have any needs for the people, but <coughs> all his needs have... <coughs> but all people have to have needs for him. Mm -hmm. Do you have this line? No, I don't have that one. Okay, you can write that there is a missing line. This is before Ahmed said, okay? Okay. There is a line missing, okay? Shutter. Oh, and it is probably what after this? And it is proper for the one reciting the Quran to be in a state of wudu. Okay, this is concerning the adab of the tilawa. This is new chapter here. The behavior or the discipline recitation of the Quran. So that chapter needs to be named. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it is proper for the one reciting the Quran to be in a state of wudu, upholding the manners of recital, with his head bowed and neither sitting cross legged nor leaning, nor in the manner of the arrogant. And the best state is that he recite while standing in salah, and that that be in a masjid, i.e., for the obligatory prayer. Otherwise, the best place for voluntary salah is one's home. As for the amount to be recited, then the norms of the salaf in this is different. So some of them used to make a full recital in one full day and night. Some of them would do more than that. Some used to make a full recital every three days. Others would recite a full recital every week. Others would recite a full recital every month because they would busy themselves instead with reflection or spreading knowledge or learning it, or some form of worship other than recital, or with seeking a living. The best course is that this is should this not... Is this understood that the means the whole Quran? Mm -hmm. Is this understood from this? Yeah, when is you say full recital, okay. I'm thinking okay. for the Quran. Yeah. But is it clear? When somebody reads this, will understand he's talking about reading the whole Quran. That's what I understood. Okay, it's fine, good. The best course is that this should not prevent a person from his important task, nor cause him bodily harm, nor should he be absent of articulary and understanding. Mm -hmm. 
Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said that I should recite Al-Baqarah and, and Ali Amran articulately with reflection is more beloved to me than I should burst out the whole Quran quickly. And whoever has spare time, he should busy himself with increased recital. As for normalcy, then that should... To win much reward. Is not there? No. Okay, to gain much reward. To gain much reward. To be a winner or a Qatrat al Quran reciting Allah, so he can achieve great reward. As for normalcy, then that should be according to one's ability, as when having pointed out. He didn't say for that Osman used to recite the Quran, the whole Quran in one raka'ah of the witr. No, not there. And Imam Shafi used to finish the Quran 60 times during Ramadan. No. Okay. So you can see that there is two lines, it's not, so, okay. okay. And it is beloved for the one who completes a recital during the daytime that he should do so during the voluntary Fajr Salah or immediately after it. And if he does so at night, to do so in the voluntary Maghrib Salah, so as to greet the beginning of the day or end by it, by that. And it is beloved that it be completed on the day of Jummah, if possible. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, whoever completes a recital of the Quran, his dua will be answered then. And Anas and Anas radiallahu anhu used to gather his family when he completed the recital and make dua. And it is beloved to beautify one's voice during recital. And whoever does not have a beautiful voice, then he should beautify it as much as possible. As for chanting in recital, then the salaf dislike this. And it is beloved to recite quietly. For it has been mentioned in a hadith that the supremacy of reciting secretly over reciting openly is like the supremacy of giving sadaqah secretly over giving sadaqah openly, a timidity. However, he should be able to hear himself. There is no harm in reciting aloud occasionally for acceptable reasons, such as strengthening one's memorization, keeping away laziness and sleep, or so as to wake up one who is asleep. And whoever has a mushaf, then he should read from it a couple of ayah each day, so as not to abandon it. And it is proper for the one reciting the Quran to reflect on how Allah has been compassionate with his creation by enabling the meaning of his speech to reach their intellect. And he should know that what he is reading is not the speech of man, and he should sense the magnificence of the speaker and ponder over the meaning of his speech. For truly, pondering is the aim of recital, even if pondering is attained only by repeating the same ayah over. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood one night repeating only the ayah from Surah Ma'ida, verse number 118, of which the meaning is, if you punish them, then truly they are your servants. As reported in Anasai and Tamim Adari, radiallahu anhu, stood repeating the following ayah from Surah to Jathia, verse number 21. Do those who have committed evil deeds consider that we shall make them equal to those who believe and do good deeds? And Arabi ibn Qaytham also stood reciting it one night from Surah to Waqiya, verse number 58. And it is proper for the, you, I'm sorry, and the meaning of that ayah is, have you seen that which you ejaculate? 
He should reflect on the drop of sperm, which is a single entity, and how it is divided in flesh, bones, veins, nerves, and different parts, such as the head, the hands, the feet, and then the noble features, such as hearing, vision, and intellect. He should think about these wonders. And when he reads about the punishment of the liars, then he should feel fear of being taken if he is heedless of the commands of Allah. And he should free himself of everything which prevents reflection, such as shaitan's whispering to him that he did not recite a certain letter correctly nor pronounce it as it should be pronounced, leading the reciter to repeat that and turn away from understanding its meaning. He should also not be prevented from reflection due to his being persistent in performing sin, being characterized with arrogance, or being tested by following his desires, as this is similar to a stain which is upon a mirror and which prevents the truth from being clear. For the heart is similar to a mirror, and the desires are like a stain, and the meanings of the Quran are like the image which is seen in the mirror. Breaking in the heart by removing the, the desire is like polishing the mirror. And it is proper that the one reciting the Quran knows that he is included in the directives of the Quran and its warning. And the stories given were not given merely to pass time, but rather for taking lessons from. So he should be aware of that. For when this is so, the servant will recite the book of his master as intended, and he should think upon the book and act according to it. For the example of the sinful person who recites the Quran and repeats it, i.e. his sin, is like the example of someone who reads the proclamation of a king and then turns away from upholding his domain and what he ordered in his proclamation. Thus, he is involved only in studying it while disobeying its order. If he were to leave off studying it while involved in disobedience, it would be farther from mockery and deserving wrath. So it's farther from deserving wrath, or it deserves more wrath. I'm assuming the, fair, the former, but this is what the person is, the um, translator is, is saying. He has this in a, a certain italic. And he believes this to be the text. It would be farther from mockery and deserving wrath. So it's farther from deserving wrath or it deserves more wrath. I'm assuming the former, but clarify. So he's not sure about which of the two is, is okay. clear. Mr. Mr. Mick and Mark, we need to check. Let me see, try, see if I can. I'm very little in Quran, I'm not so good. A person who is certain Quran should be aware that he also been attended to be addressed by the Quran and its punish and its warning, and that the stories is not for a decent time, but for to learn lessons. Mm -hmm. So you should pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. So whenever you recite the Quran, so if you act in this manner, if you act in this manner, you be similar to a slave mm -hmm. that make a contract حين الدنيا تلوت إذا وتعب كتبه سيده مقصود you be similar to a person in that his master directed him to do certain task so he need to focus in the writing and he act accordingly because the likeness of the disobedient person when he recites the Quran and re repeat it, mm -hmm. similar to the person 
who recite, who read the book of the king mm -hmm. and, and ignore Furnish or furnish his kingdom, or re enhancing his kingdom. And whatever he command in the book is only studying. Mm -hmm. but he's not carrying the order mm -hmm. so if he abandoning the studying mm -hmm. and being different will be a father from mockery and <coughs> and he doesn't deserve the punishment I don't know this yeah he said father from mockery and deserving the punishment no that means he became a distant from the mockery and okay instead of repeating the word and deserving the punishment so he is not okay but uh, now this should be referring to um, if he's only involved in studying it mm -hmm. while he's not while obeying he's, he's not obeying, obeying yes mm -hmm. If he, but if he leaves off studying while involved in disobedience. Okay, we we'll have to get to back to this because it seems mixing together. Mm -hmm. And he have to free himself from his power and mighty, and not to focus in his own self and please with his his purification, but to see himself in short coming. And this will make it means for him to get closer to Allah. Yeah, that, that I have that. Okay, that can you read this? Okay. And it is befitting for him to free himself mm -hmm. from his strength and ability mm -hmm. and to avoid looking at himself with the look of contentment and self-appreciation. Mm -hmm. For truly, whoever sees himself as being helpless, then that is a cause for him coming close to Allah. Okay. This is the last? That's the last. Okay. All right. Zakullah okay. khair. Inshallah, we'll try to clarify that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Zakullah khair. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Allah knows this. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha.